Hey, how are you? Happy Monday. Let's talk about, um, actually I don't even really have my lunch yet. It's about noon, but I don't, I think my lunch is still in the refrigerator. Is there any yogurt in your lunch? Yeah, we can go get it. Let's go, let's go get my lunch. So yes, there is yogurt, cheese stick, salami sandwich, and some yogurt. People are asking how to how to put a wheel on a motor. There's a hub that goes in here. People are asking about how do I drive a wheel with a sim motor. This is the old 320, 0320 part number. We're out of these. The A suffix on the end of the hub has a little boss here and a boss in here that locates the sprocket. We can go see what they look like out in the shop. Six oh three A three. We've got these in they just came in, so these will be out for you to use today. We gotta get the website right. Regarding the Rhino track drive, we do have a bumper mount package for the Rhino track module. The minimum bumper requirement, you can mount it to each corner of the module. Here's the front left, so this mounts to the upper bar of the front left module. Then there's a bracket on the back left. The mirror designs are on the other side or the right side in this case. So we're going to sell a package, I think it's 3358 is the package for the bumper kit for the Rhino track modules. So right and left is 3358. I do want to show you some things regarding gameplay and ball intake and ball shooting. I'm on a team here at Andy Mark, Team 3940, and we were working on a Saturday. The kids were prioritizing what was important with the robot and something that we thought was important was collecting a ball and then putting it into the low goal and then also putting it into the high goal, even though the high goal we thought was lower priority. We found a few videos that were helping us prototype Robot in Three Days group from Florida and they've got an intake here on their robot with this big blue wheel and they have a, a high goal shooter. So they would low goal shoot running this backwards and in a high goal they would shoot using these white wheels. So this is the Robot in Three Days group from Florida. So you can see the ball coming in the bottom and then shooting at the top in slow motion. The Green Horde group out of North Dakota, they have a, a two wheeled shooter kind of like the guys in Florida but it's a horizontal um, configured two-wheeled shooter and it pulls the ball in and then it throws the ball out really quickly using the same mechanism which I love using the same mechanism to pull it in and to push it out both with high goal shooting capability and low goal shooting capability. Team Cockamaby down in University of South Carolina they collected the ball here and they put it on a little tee and then they had a tough box with an arm that kicked the ball into the goal. You can see the ball coming in Then this arm swings around and kicks the ball. There. Last but not least was a group, University of Sherbrooke near Montreal, Canada. They were building a robot in 100 hours. They have a dual pneumatic actuation system. One pneumatic operation lowers down the gripper and another operation grabs the ball. So that is an easy way to grab the ball and dump it without using any motors. It's a perfectly fine way to score points and capture your opponent's tower. Another thing that these guys did with this pneumatic ball grabber was they're able to lower some of the defenses. They're able to raise the portcullis door with the same operation. So anytime you can have a pneumatic operation or a motorized operation that could do two or three different things for your robot, that's going to help yourself out. So that's all i got for today. i got to get back to work. So do you. We'll see you on Wednesday. And uh, I think we'll have pizza on Wednesday. Bye. Now I did see John Stamos pop up. I don't. I don't know if if Stamos still the the spokesperson for for this yogurt stuff. I don't know.